So today, what we'll be doing today, we'll be creating an EC2 instance. We already know how to create an instance. EC2 instance is nothing but a virtual computer. It's a virtual machine. It's an AWS service. It's a compute service. We already know about that. Okay, and that is good. So what we'll be doing today, we'll be installing our first LAMP stack, like sample Linux application, you can say, sample application basically. LAMP stack is nothing but Linux machine, which is a computer operating system. Okay. Apache is a web server. Okay. And MySQL as a database. Of course, a server should have a database, right? Then only it can store the data, basically. And the PHP is like a web content, like HTML. Okay. Let me go ahead and create an instance for real quick. And uh, we'll know how to create an instance, navigate to EC2 dashboard. I'll just choose the default AMI. I'll just choose the t2.micro, which is free time eligible. I'll just review and launch. Okay. We and launch. I have this key. Okay. I can acknowledge that and just review that. And uh, our instance will be ready in a minute. So, meantime, I can go ahead and explain. So we are gonna follow this document. This document, you see that AWS, docs.aws.amazon.com. This document is completely Amazon documentation. So you will see the step-by-step -step what you need to do and what exactly it does, okay? All that kind of stuff. Because they are the ones who should tell us how to use it. If you have a product, right? And you, you need to tell us how to use it. Okay, the same way, let's say, for example, you have a product, right? That product might, uh, that product uh, will help you to, uh, for a fitness product, for example, and you are the one who should tell buyers how to use it, right? Because you are the one who built it. The same way, Amazon built this compute service, they should tell us how to use it. We are just using them. We're not, we're not doing anything innovation, we're just using the service that are being built already. So, okay. So we are gonna follow this documentation. Okay. We are gonna install, what is it? We are gonna install MariaDB. Okay. And we are gonna install Apache. Okay. And we are gonna start Apache and we are gonna enable Apache and we'll see how does that go. Okay. Let me go ahead and connect to my instance. Just grab this command. What I'm doing right now, I'm SSH. I'm connecting through SSH to this computer, right? From where I'm connecting, I'm connecting from my local computer. Local computer to this computer using SSH. I'm not putting any username or password, right? Okay, just SSH connection, okay? And uh, let me go ahead and grab this command. And uh, let me go to my terminal. Try to connect to this command. Okay, now I am connected to my EC2 instance, okay? Then what we'll do, we'll follow this documentation so that you guys will have this documentation link. So you guys can follow this documentation, okay? So the first thing is update the packages. Update the packages. Whatever the package, whatever the package that needs to be updated, yum update will, what it will do? Since last time you provisioned the server, okay? Last time you provisioned the server. What server is this Amazon Linux 2 server, okay? Let me show you what does that mean. So you used this AMI, this base AMI, right? You used this base AMI, okay? After you use this AMI, let's say we provisioned the server a couple of days ago. They make some changes to this AMI. For example, they have updated Python 2.7.2.3. Or for example, they updated Java 1.8 to 1.9. For example, okay, 
those packages needs to be updated on this machine as well whatever the machine that we provisioned using the cmi okay those needs to be maybe may not be updated basically based on the requirement okay so the command to update any packages sudo m of course if you have to deal with any m installation updating packages or creation of users or any root configured like a root like a you know super user configurations any super user configurations you should be using sudo or you will be logging as a root user okay i'll be doing as is sudo m update dash y okay why no packages marked for update because this ami is up to date we just used the same ami this is up to date okay no packages marked update okay that's fine then we are in the good page we are we are good now the second step is let's go ahead and install lam maria db this package you see that this package sudo yum install or sudo amazon linux extra install this is amazon linux command to install the specific package okay this is amazon linux extras is the command you don't have to remember that but you would have to remember yum simple yum is a package manager for linux systems that's it very simple right and let's go ahead and copy this and let's go ahead and install maria db okay and it will be ready in a second next what we will do just to check that system version you see that system release just to, to check like the system release if you don't see this command let's say if you might get an issue like amazon linux extras command is not found you might not be using the amazon linux 2 machine you might be using only amazon linux instead of 2 then you might see that this command is not found okay so you need to you can check using this command the system etc release let's check we did not get that error but still let's check okay you see the amazon linux release 2 we we are using right right ami so that's why we did not get that issue okay so the next thing what we are going to do we are going to install apache you see that apache httpd is nothing but apache let's go ahead and install apache okay let's say if you want you don't want to install something but you want to look before you install right for example let's say am i installing the right version am i looking am i like you know this this version is right for me blah 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 you could use this command the info package name will get you what what version of that package being installed or what version of package that you are trying to install and uh, all that kind of stuff that package info you will see using info command yum info okay so once we install apache let's go not only apache any service that you install the service should should be started using this command system ctl start what is the service here apache okay let's go ahead and start the service okay now enable the service okay start the service and enable the service enable the service check the status of the service using status command system ctl status you see that apache is active and up and running let's go ahead and uh, let's see the next steps okay so what you can check you can check in the website as well and you would have to see this page okay 
and let's go in and check in the website and if we don't see that package if if we don't see this this test page and there is got to be a something and i want you to guys tell me what what is exactly missing okay but let's go to ec2 dashboard let's go to ec2 dashboard and this is the instance right that we just installed apache and everything okay so let's copy this public dns and http Let's give a um, second and let's see what happens. It's not gonna come. Can someone help me why it's not gonna come? Maybe the inbound traffic rule is not yeah. set. Okay, let's yeah. go ahead and check that inbound traffic rule. Well, that's a good catch. Oh, yeah, that's a good catch. So this this instance right now accepting only uh, the SSH, not like a, this is when you do HTTP, right? It's a port 80. HTTPS is port 443, 443, 443 by default, okay? Now, we are trying to access that server using port 80, but there is no inbound rule that is accepting traffic from port 80. So let's go ahead and add, for time being, add everything. Okay, just that's fine. And just allow the traffic from anywhere. Anywhere, when we're, we're not specific, just allow the traffic from anywhere because we don't have any sensitive applications over there. So that's fine. If anybody can access this application, that's okay. And let's go ahead and refresh it again. You see that? That was the issue and we fixed it and a good job. So we deployed our sample Apache application, right? And what next? So we just, you can set the file system. You see that user mod, modifying user permissions, this Apache file, you are adding EC2 user to Apache file, basically Apache group. So when you, when you install, Apache, like there will be a group called Apache group will be created. And you can add this user to Apache so that this user will execute any kind of Apache operations, right? Let's say, for example, if you wanna, uh, if you have a specific group, for example, wheel group, wheel group will allow you to run like a super user commands without logging as a super user, but in order to access that, you would have to, you would have to, uh, you know, add it to that wheel group, right? The same way. In order to, you know, uh, get any kind of Apache operations as an EC2 user, we are adding, that means we are modifying this EC2 user permissions to have, uh, to add it to this Apache group, basically. Okay? And that's just a file system permissions, actually. So we, we don't we don't write and we are not gonna use any file system, okay? Next, the test to test LAMP server. So we just deployed the LAMP server, right? And to test that LAMP server, let's go ahead and check this page and let's see what we will see, okay? So, You want to know why this so you're doing as a super user echo adding this content to this file 
but still you are getting issues. Permission denied. Even on the top, permission denied. You know why? Okay, let's go ahead and use sudo. Still permission denied. Okay, we missed one one step basically. Let's go ahead and grab that one. These are the steps that we are. These are the steps that are being missed basically. So let's add that easy to user to a specific group so that this user can run. Okay. To verify the membership of a Okay. Change the ownership. Of, okay. Add that user to a specific group. Done. Okay. Now, let's go here. Yeah, let's connect back to that server. You see the EC2 user ADM real Apache group. You see that there is Apache group and the system MD general group. Those are the available groups. EC2 user itself is a group, admin group, real group, Apache group. So in order to get root privileges, the user should be added to a specific group. Can someone tell me what group is it? This one, right? Real group, right? Yep, that user should be added to that wheel group so that he can get those permissions. Now change the ownership of that file. You see that this change that ownership. We are changing that ownership as an EC2 user Apache group for this specific folder where www dot whatever. Let's go ahead and change the ownership of that file. You see that where www right? We just did that. <clears throat> Next, what we can do, what we can do, what this 2775 is doing. Can someone tell me 2775? File permission? Yes, exactly. File permissions for this folder, basically. And find what it is finding something. Okay, find something, except put this one to that folder or whatever. Let's go ahead and uh, do that. Okay. The next thing is, this is how configure applications basically. How they configure system, applications ready system, you can say. Okay. But though these values, all these kind of values will be defined in pipeline basically. We don't this is very simple, basic Apache, whatever. But in companies, they do have a multiple strategies and they are, they are pretty good compared to this, actually. OK. Now let's go ahead and test the create a PHP file. You see that? So what this command is doing, echo, what echo will do? Echo will just print that content, right? Echo will pre just print this content, but this echo, when you do, when you do this, is this less than or greater than? Less than, right? This will add that content to it, this specific file. You see that php info.php file, right? So this will add this content to this file, basically. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, no permission denied issue. We did not even use root user because this EC2 user has been added to Apache group and this file ownership has been changed to Apache group. So whoever have access to that Apache group, whoever added to that Apache group will pretty much automatically get access to this folder. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, 
let's go ahead and grab this and let's see what happens. Okay. We should see this different page this time. And let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Forward slash. What did they say? You see that? Let me explain. If I go here, right? And if I click on any different, you see that? What you guys can see? Investing wealth, something like that, right? If I click on this, I click on, you see that? BIG. That's how they deploy the content that belongs to the specific application, basically. Here, you see that if I remove this, if I remove this, actually, let's not remove that. Okay, let's copy that, open in a different. Treat this one as a wellsforgo.com. Now, I want to see something else, small business banking, okay? Add one more folder, add that file to this specific, whatever the file that you can call it as, okay? Something like that. This is the, this is, so this is not, this is not a biz or this is not a investing health or something like that, right? They do have their own configuration. They created those folders. They add the files that are belongs to the specific, uh, website inside that folder so that when they try to execute that folder, when they try to access that folder, they can see the content of this website basically. Are you guys with me? Yeah, we should. Okay. Okay, that's pretty pretty smart. So now, now that is good. We, we can see PHP and we can see like a Apache sample, Okay, that's that's fine. So let's let's do. You see that list installed. Well, let's see what this this will do. This is going to just list, but we'll see. You see that Apache installed, MariaDB, okay, and a PHP installed. Those are the three installed packages for this application, basically. And just to delete that info, you just remove this file, basically. This php info.php file, you remove that file, let's see what happens. This, this page should go away, right? If you remove that file, right? Because we are we did delete the content that belongs to this specific website. You can call it as a website, okay? Let's go, pretty simple and straightforward actually. Let's go and grab this command and just remove that and let's see what happens. Okay, now let's go here and verify this file. Let's refresh it. You're gonna see file not found. File not found, right? You you saw that. Let's go ahead and put something, some more content. And let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and copy this file. Okay. Let's put Let's create a file. 
right? What command should I use to create a file? I can call careers start HTML. Okay. Now I can go edit some content. Okay. I can use VI, right? Let's go ahead and edit. I'm going to put some content over there and let's see what happens. Okay. Let's do careers, right? For example, let's go here. Okay. Is this a, where is that file not found? Okay. Here is not fun. Okay. Let's go there and the carry is not replace the carries to index.html. Let's see. How do I? So I want to rename that file. How can I do that? Can someone tell me how I can rename that file? Actually, I can even I can even move something like that. Okay, so HTML. Okay, now let's go ahead and see what happens. You see that? So the index.html is a default page basically. So index.html is a default page. In that index.html, you would have to specify if you are using a different folder, you would have to specify that different folder and you would have to have that carries.html or whatever HTML files that you wanna, like web contents. Are you guys, Getting an idea like how this web server works? Are you guys with me? Yeah, Vishnu. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a backup of this server. Vishnu, okay. One small doubt. Mm. Yes. We changed that uh, um, outbound traffic rules before, right? Mm. Yes, inbound traffic rules. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, inbound traffic rules, right? Mm -hmm. So in the organization, will they uh, set those rules? Yeah, they will set the rules. If not, they will ask us to set the rules. Okay. Yeah, they will they will be more specific, like what servers needs to talk to what servers actually. That's a one-time configuration, right? Okay. So just one-time configurations and they will have only one security group for production, one security group for testing, I guess, 90% of the companies, they do that way actually, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's a one-time configuration. So the traffic rules were set at the security group level. So if you want an instance that can allow traffic from a specific traffic, that instance should go to that security group, which will allow that traffic basically. So they will set the configurations like that, okay? Okay. Yep. Any other questions from anybody? Okay. So let's go ahead and take a backup of this server. Okay. So there are two ways that you can take a backup. The one way you can simply create a, your AMI. Okay. How I can create an AMI? Just simply, I can go to actions, image, create an image. I can call Apache something like that. Apache backup. Okay. I'll take that. Just create an image. And I can wait till you see that an image is in pending state right now. Okay. image is in pending state right now. It's gonna be ready in a minute. So once that image is ready, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna terminate that instance 
And I'm going to use this image to create an instance and we would have to have all those files stored there. And let's see what happens. Okay, it will be ready in a minute. Meantime, uh, Vishnu, a small basic question, Vishnu. Yes. So you did the install lamp, right? The lamp is an application, you said? It's a server yeah. application. Yeah, so the Linux is the operating system, which is Amazon Linux already. We did not install yeah. it. Like yeah, Linux. we have already started working in the Linux, right? That Linux, is our yeah. instance. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. I have installed Apache and I have mm -hmm. installed a database, MariaDB. You can call okay. it like MySQL database, basically. Okay. So in the means how means why we are installing these databases to work on that or how is no? So the database is right. If you if you have an application, right? If you have an application means that application should have a database, right? For example, let's say wellsforgo.com, right? Mm -hmm. And let's go to wellsforgo.com. And uh, let's go to apply, apply a bank account or whatever, right? Start. If I apply, if I open an account, right? If I open an account now, the data that I'm gonna put, what data? My first name, last name, where I live, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, where it's gonna go? It's gonna go to the database. So they can store the database and they will check, they will verify the details so that they can approve my application, right? Yes. That is the reason why we are installing database for. Okay, so the Apache is a database then? Apache is a web server. Apache, yes. mm -hmm. Apache will let you access your server through internet, basically. Let's say you, you have this EC2 instance, right? You created mm -hmm. your yes. EC2 yes. instance, which uh -huh. is Amazon Linux. Yes. Over here. Mm -hmm. How you can see the content of that EC2 instance over here in a, in a website? How you can see that? Because of Apache. Apache is the person mm -hmm. who is making that happen. Without Apache, you cannot see the content of that instance over here in the website, basically. Apache will let you integrate with the internet, you can say. When I say will let you, Apache is the mediator between your computer and the internet. Are you guys with me? Yes, Vishnu. So that is the main use of Apache. Apache is a web server. Without Apache, you cannot talk to internet. This server cannot talk to internet basically. There, there are some more, there are very similar technologies as well, like a web servers. Nginx is one of them, WebSphere, WebLogic, there are some of them actually, okay? And why this image is taking so much time? Any other questions from anybody? So the image will be ready very soon. In the meantime, we can go ahead and grab that security group so that I don't have to change the inbound traffic rules for a different security group that a different instance that we are going to create. So there is no copy over here. That's strange. Let me go ahead and copy security group and let's just put it here for just for one second. Okay. And let's check. Yeah, this AMI is available now. What I will do, I can go ahead and terminate this instance. Okay. This time I'm not gonna install anything, but still I can access that application and I, I can show you how I can do that. Okay. So what I will do, I can go to the backup image. This is a backup, right? Apache backup. That is the image that I just created and I can launch instance from this AMI, not like a, this basic AMI. 
I'm not launching instance from this basic AMI, basic Amazon Linux. I'm not doing that. I'm creating instance from backup AMI, backup, backup AMI basically, okay? And uh, let's go ahead and uh, choose the instance type and everything is same. And I can, uh, I can configure the security group. I don't wanna create a new one. What I will do, I can just use existing one. Which one is the? I5, yeah, right? mm -hmm. yeah, this one. Five. Let's take that one and let's go review and launch. Yeah, I can use the same key pair. And let's go to that instance and we'll give a minute. It will be ready in yeah very very soon actually let let me go grab this one and let me try to open this website it's gonna go away right because that instance 44.205.250.209 gone so we terminated that instance basically so that should go away anytime soon okay what we can do meantime we can just go to new instance. I did not install any Apache. I did not install anything, right? Let's go here and get it done. Now you see that I can see whatever the content that I had in a previous server, I can see that content because I created backup image and I have used that backup image to provision a server. This is how you rebuild your instance on a disaster recovery. Let's say you have your application running and uh, you take an AMI every night, right? Something crashes and your application is not up and running. Next day when you came here and your server just, it's not in ready state. It stopped and you cannot get that one back something happening and you don't you don't know what exactly this is but you'd wanna you'd wanna troubleshoot it will take some time so that sometime let's say it will take 10 minutes 10 minutes like you're gonna lose maybe 100,000 transactions you don't wanna have that happen right what you can do you can use the backup to create a server immediately once the server is up and running and uh, customers can access that server they, they'll do shopping, whatever they want to. Behind, you'll be troubleshooting so that next time it won't happen again. Are you guys with me? Okay. Yes, sure. That's the so one in, way. In real time scenario, whatever the work we will do, we will keep every AMI, means backup. We will keep every backup. Some companies, they, they keep AMI, some companies, they keep snapshots. The, okay. That is the other way to take backup. I'm gonna show you right now, okay? And there is one more way that you can create a backup, right? How you can create a backup is one way, create just a straightforward AMI and you're good to go. The second way is what you can do, you can just simply create a backup for your EBS volume. Mm -hmm. This account is, is very, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna change it every second. Let's go to EBS volumes, right? So what I will do, I can create a snapshot for this EBS volume, okay? Oh, which one is this? Which one I have? Oh, this is a created, okay, June 22, that's a backup basically. And this is the one, May 13. Available, okay. Let's let's go ahead and create a snapshot for this instance. 
not in instance, CBS volume basically. I can call a partial backup, right? And create a snapshot. And use this snapshot, okay? Use this snapshot to create an AMI. Use this snapshot to create an AMI and use that AMI to create an instance, basically. Hey, why we would want to create snapshots? Why don't we can just create an AMI? Right? AMI is the easiest way. You don't have to back up your, you don't have to create a snapshots. Or again, you would have to create an AMI with the snapshot. So what is the point? You can simply create an AMI, right? That's a good question. In order to create an AMI, you need to stop an instance, basically. You need to stop an instance, create an AMI, and start that instance back. What else? If your instance will take 10 minutes to back up, remember that AMI was taking two to three minutes. So that two to three minutes, your server is going to down, and you don't want that happen. But when you create a backup for your EBS volumes that are attached to that server, server doesn't have to stop mode. You can just simply create a snapshots and use that snapshot to create an AMI. I can call it as a backup AMI Apache, okay? Okay. This AMI is ready. I'm gonna use this AMI to create an instance. Again, this step is choose AMI step is escalated. And uh, yeah, let me go to configure security group actually. So I'm gonna use existing, right? Let's go review and launch. I'm gonna acknowledge the create that one, okay, and choose that one, okay, and we will be creating one more instance. I can call it as a snapshot backup, snapshot backup, okay, and what I'm going to do, this will take a minute to come up. Okay, it's ready now. Let's copy this DNS and let's go here, HTTP and hit enter. You see that? Now I can see this is different server. You see that? 3.84.86.151. This is 52.54.238.53. Those are two different servers basically. Are you guys with me? Yes, Vishnu. This is how you create a backups. Okay. Does that make sense to you guys? So Gita, you can go ahead and help me how I can terminate this server. Go to actions. Okay. Oh, instance state. Oh. Okay. And stop the uh, terminal stop. Yeah, I, I can go ahead and terminate this instance. And the other one as well, I can go ahead and terminate this instance basically. So I can go ahead and terminate this instance, okay? And the one more topic that I wanna show you guys, cloud formation. From next time onwards, when you create your instance, try to use automation script, okay? and to try to use the cloud formation. And let's go, I'll show you how to do that. So very simple, okay? I can explain cloud formation later. We, we have a section actually cloud formation class. I can explain cloud formation later, but I want you to guys provision that instance as many times as you can using automation scripts so that you guys can talk about it, okay? So what I'm gonna do, delete failed. Let's go ahead and uh, delete this talk.
That's why they're charging me. I don't want anything to be retained. Okay, so let's go to cloud formation, create a stack. I could just import with existing resources. Okay, let's go ahead and import. Okay, this is, this is true. We don't need that right now. So what I will do, I'll just go ahead and create a stack. I don't have any sample ready, template ready. So what I will do, I can, okay. I can use a, use a sample, okay. Select a sample template. You see that I can even provision that LAMP stack. It's gonna create a Linux mission, which is easy to instance and a MySQL and a database for storage, okay. But, but, I, I wanna I wanna have let's see cloud formation stack to create EC2 instance. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I thought it's gonna be short and sweet but I, I can i can teach this one in the later section any questions till now anybody have any questions